Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Today is my last day of the post-Easter Sabbath, and it has been just such a nice break to take these three days to rest and recover. Again, three is such a holy number. Um, and so on the third day, I just feel so rejuvenated. And so I just want to thank um, all my church family just for being so supportive of this Sabbath. And um, you guys have just been really great about keeping me um, kind of away from church business. And if I have gotten messages or anything, they've just been light and sparing and just really encouraging. So thank you all so much. Um, I am so fortunate. Today, for our daily devotion, we are going to continue in the resurrection encounters that the risen Christ has with folks. And today we're going to be in Luke chapter 24, starting in verse 13, on the walk to Emmaus, the road to Emmaus. Um, and this one is especially significant to me because I did the walk to Emmaus um, which is an amazing spiritual pilgrimage that churches um, do all over the world. And it's just really life-changing, and I highly recommend it. Um, that's my plug for Walk to Emmaus. If you haven't done it, you should do it. This is the reading of the, the, Lord, of the Word from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, starting in verse 13. That very day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing together, Jesus himself drew near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you two are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still, looking sad. One of them, named Cleopas, answered him and said, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened here in these days? And he said to them, Jesus said, What things? And they said to him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, the man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things have happened. Moreover, some of the women in our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things to enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted them into the, all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to where they were gathering. He acted as if he was going farther, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay here with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem. And they found the eleven and those who were with them gathering together, saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. And so I just love this scripture because I just think it is so amazing that they have this incredible conversation with Jesus, that Jesus literally goes through all of the Lord's grand narrative all throughout the scriptures, goes throughout the Old Testament and the gospel accounts and um, is telling them all these amazing things. Again, the scriptures according to Jesus, and they don't even know it's Jesus but it is so significant that it is in the breaking of the bread and the blessing of the wine at the table, the Lord's table, that their eyes are open. 
And so for us, when we partake in communion, and when, again, like I talked about my spiritual pilgrimage on the walk to Emmaus, we took communion every single day. Um, It is so significant because that is the time where the Holy Spirit does open our eyes and our ears to what is um, happening, and the Lord does um, reveal himself in those sacred moments. And so here are some takeaways that I want us to just think about today after today's devotional um, reading in Luke chapter 24. Um, The two followers on the road to Emmaus, they did not have their eyes opened um, until they actually had invited Jesus in, not knowing still who he was, and eating the meal. And so the first thing that I want us to really think about is ask ourselves how we have invited God into our lives. Um, Cleopas and his companion listened to the voice of truth and invited him into their home. They trusted their gut even when they didn't know it was Jesus, and they they invited the Lord in. And so to me, I, just, I want us to just really um, stay focused on inviting Jesus into different um, parts of our day, into different parts of our week, Um, Maybe invite him into areas that we haven't considered doing so before. Um, And I know I get so, so focused on my pain or my struggles or the things that are um, just causing me anxiety that I forget to invite Jesus in. And so if that's the case for you too, I would just encourage you to invite God in just like they did. And the second thing that I want us to get is to surrender our expectations. Um, And so, you know, basically we might think that we want, you know, our lives to be going a certain way. We might have had expectations about how the spring was going to go. Um, again, the Cleopas and his partner were walking on Emmaus. They thought they knew what the week was going to hold, what the day was going to hold. They had no idea that they were going to have an encounter with the risen Christ. And so, I know so many of us are grieving um, the expectations that we had for March and April, maybe May. Um, And so I just I encourage us to have an open hand um, for whatever God has for us in this time and um, to really seek God's perspective on the thing. So the two disciples see their circumstances from God's perspective because Jesus explained the scriptures to them, which is so cool. So we have the same opportunity to share God's um, point and perspective by reading all 66 books of the Bible. And we can, you know, seek God's perspective in things by really getting into the word. And so I love that Jesus basically just gave them an exposition um, of all of the scriptures on the road to Emmaus. Um, But we can do that, too. And we can see what God has for us when we look at the scriptures. And the last thing that I am encouraging all of us to do is to trust in God's timing. Um, The disciples were not able to recognize Jesus until the time was right and until it was God's divine timing. And he didn't allow them to suffer in grief a moment longer that it was absolutely necessary, but he didn't end the discomfort too soon. Spiritual maturity rarely occurs and continues in the way that we want it to and growth is always a journey it is not a sprint it is a marathon and it takes time and so my prayer is that we would just submit to God's will and trust in God's timing because God is faithful and just to meet us in that and God is going to open our eyes to what he has for us to see Um, just throughout this journey and this time in the pandemic, throughout this springtime. And as we walk with Christ, my prayer is we would have those divine moments where our eyes are opened and we can clearly see what the resurrected Christ is saying to us right in front of our faces. I'll see you all tomorrow.